Arsenal Football Club officials. What do I mean by this? We're going to be speaking about Arsenal today. Uh, I'm not going to be going into much detail about the, the game against Bournemouth because I'm going to save that for the match week reaction, which should be coming out tomorrow because um, Manchester United and Liverpool are still yet to play. They are playing tonight. So, as I said, Arsenal are vicious. What am I talking about? Um, obviously, as a as United fan, um, it's, it's it's not the best thing to see your rival team out. But listen, Arsenal Arsenal have had an incredible incredible start to 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 the campaign. Three games, three wins. If you compare this to last com, uh, campaign, um, well, actually they were sitting into a similar position in, in to what's happening to Ma- Manchester United last season. Um, Arsenal obviously lost their first three games. They were sitting on the bottom of the log. Um, and this season, it's, it's three games, three wins. They are sitting on top. They're the only team with a 100% record. And now, there's there's, lot of, there's lots of things you can say about this. You can say, oh, Arsenal haven't faced um, anyone big yet. Of course not. We three, we three game weeks into the season. How can you expect them to face one of the big uh, big teams? It's not like they've, they've had all relegation teams. They've faced... Some good teams, some well organized teams in Crystal Palace. We've seen Crystal Palace, um, we've seen Arsenal uh, um, go to Crystal Palace and take the three points, and a top team like Liverpool, um, um, taking a draw from Palace. So it has been widely impressive. Also, also they faced Leicester and now Bournemouth, um, getting the wins in both, um, two clean sheets. Um, Leicester, they they that was a good game, but. But I think from an awesome point of view, what 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 should be most exciting is how well Mikel Ateta is doing with the squad, because it it was an absolutely incredible transfer window. Maybe not as much on paper, but the signings, the impact they are having on the team is brilliant. Bizik, um, Jesus, he's he's really filled a void in Arsenal's attack. He's allowed them. Um, to play the way Arteta wants, he really adds some because uh, he adds so much energy to the attack, pr- pressing from the f- front. He's able to collect that ball, turn, dribble, pass one, two plays, and then um, hit it off to the left or right wing, and then he can make his his uh, direct runs into the box. I think Jesus is a brilliant signing for Arsenal, and, and we we said it again. Um, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I think he is the the best signing. Of this transfer window from any club because of the impact he's going to have solely on his specific team. Zinchenko as well, um, he's he looks as a good signing. Obviously, um, they've added um, squad depth and coming out um, this morning, Arsenal seem not to be they they're not done um, this transfer window. Obviously, Fabio Vieira, a new signing, um, he hasn't. Um, yet got some minutes in the Premier League, so Arsenal fans should be excited to see what he can bring. A play, a very exciting player, because he he's a player that can unlock defenses. But speaking about exciting players, um, Arsenal are after Pedro Neto. Um, the fee looks to be around fifty million pounds. Now, uh, Pedro Neto is a very interesting signing because, uh, listen, in the type of play he is. He's a left-footed uh, Portuguese winger. We know what Neto is about uh, coming through, through uh, obviously from Wolves. Um, I, I like him. He's a very, he's a tricky player. He's a, he's a direct player. He's an exciting player to watch because he gets the ball. Um, he, he does efficient things with the ball. He can beat his man, go for goal. We've seen him score solo goals. We've seen him score goals from tight angles. We've seen um, some some moments of brilliance. Now. If you look at the stats per game, it's not as exciting, but it wasn't as exciting with Gabriel Jesus as well. You see, his stats at City, uh, obviously, you never get as much minutes. Similar thing to Neto's. He struggled with, with injury in the past. He hasn't always um, been like the first, first choice, but he's he's in, he's, he's getting minutes this season uh, against Wolves. Uh, he hasn't gotten a, a goal this season yet, but... What I want to compare this Pedro Neto signing is to Diego Jota. Because if you remember, um, when Jota signed, just before he signed for, for Liverpool, he, was, he wasn't he was even a starter 
full full wheels that season. He was he was sitting on the bench. He was getting substituted on. It was like, uh, uh, with some Wolves fans would be like, you're paying fifty million for for a bench player, but he had the right qualities. He fitted the the profile that Liverpool needed, and I think it's a similar scenario for Pedro Neto because um, Neto can can play on both wings. I think he's, I think they do need a winger with Nicolas Pepe um, seemingly more likely to go through the door. Obviously, when Martinelli and Bukayo Saka are starting the wings, they still need some, some of that squad depth. Uh, we see Smithrow obviously played on the left side, but I don't think he's, um, he's, he's a natural winger. I think Smithrow is more of, a, more of that attack of midfielder, the where Odegaard is playing, so he can provide some some squad depth there, but he can play on the left hand side. But I think they need they need this type of winger, Arsenal Football Club. Someone someone who's fast, someone who's direct, um, someone who's who's gonna uh, keep Bukayo Saka and Martinelli on their toes, add that squad depth, add that uh, competition in the squad. So for me, I think Pedro Neto is a brilliant signing. Obviously, United have been offered him as well. But you know, it just seem to to be spending a large sum on Anthony. So we'll see what happens there. I think if Pedro Neto does move to Arsenal, I think it's a brilliant move for for both sides, including Wolves getting fifty million for him. The other the other thing I want to talk about is just the the general atmosphere of um, Wolves. Um, it's uh, you know when you're watching teams and you just see the the expressions of the pitch, you see. You see how the players are reacting. You, you you can really tell the mood of the squad. And Arsenal, they just they just look like a team at the moment. They look they they all look happy. They, they know their job. They know what the goals is. And they they all look like they're working. They look like a team. Um, obviously they've they've brought in uh, Zinchenko and and uh, Jesus and Fabio Vieira. But there's also players like William Saliba, who's like a new signing coming into the squad. Um, it's just like a new atmosphere for for the players and and staff. So I think from from Arsenal, it's 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 looking like a good season. And uh, we've seen Chelsea drop some points this weekend. We we saw um, Spurs, the I won't say unconvincingly win um, against Wolves, but we'll talk more about that on the match week um, reaction. So for me, I think it's really positive for Arsenal, and I think. That they could um, be likely heading towards the, um, at least. Um, a, I think Arsenal would be heading towards that top four, and and the way the season is starting, um, they're looking like strong, strong favourites for it. So thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, um, and always feel free um, to comment down below about. About any of your opinions, discussions, any any type of thing you want to see me discuss, um, the match week re reaction will be coming out tomorrow. Just waiting for that United and Liverpool game. Hopefully, we don't get thumped, um, but we all know we are going to lose tonight. So, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing.